Thank you and welcome to all of you who are here with us this evening for tonight's Tuesday, July 22nd, 2014 meeting of the Berkeley County Board of Education. At this time, I call the meeting to order. I declare that a quorum is present and that the media has been notified. Moving to agenda item number two, entitled Approval of Agenda, do I have a motion and second for the approval of tonight's agenda? You do, Mr. Chair. I move that we approve the agenda for this evening's meeting. I second. Thank you, Dr. Etheridge. Thank you, Ms. Schwabe. A motion has been made by Dr. Etheridge, seconded by Mrs. Schwabe, to approve this evening's agenda. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 The agenda has been approved. Now we'd like to ask all of those who would like to participate to participate with the board in tonight's opening prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number four. Uh, hearing no objection for the board, I will put the minutes of the meeting of June 24th, our budget hearing. I will compile those with the minutes of our June 24th regular meeting as well as our July 8th board workshop. Do I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of these three meetings? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Second. Thank you, Dr. Etheridge. We have a motion from Mr. Cooper. That motion has been seconded by Dr. Etheridge to approve the minute, minutes of the June 24th budget hearing, the June 24th regular meeting, and the July 8th board workshop. All those in favor of approving these minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously. The minutes as listed in agenda item four have been approved. Moving to agenda item number five. Tonight, agenda number five, uh, item number five is entitled approval of the June 2014 Head Start budget expenditures report, June 2014 Head Start credit card report, revised behavior management handbook, and prospective new hires. Do I have a motion and a second regarding the June 2014 Head Start report? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the 2014 or June 2014 Head Start information as presented in agenda item five. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Etheridge. A motion has been made by Ms. Lee. That motion has been seconded by Dr. Etheridge to approve the June 2014 Head Start information as presented in agenda item five. All those in favor of the motion as stated, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously. This brings us to agenda item number six, citizen comments. We have a few citizen comments this evening. Prior to hearing the citizen comments, let me please read to you the citizen comment procedures as outlined in our Berkeley County School District policy. In order to conduct the meeting in an orderly and efficient manner, we ask that you honor the following guidelines. Stakeholder comments are welcomed and encouraged. However, the board will not take immediate action on public comments at this meeting. Any person wishing to address the board must register prior to the meeting. Comments must be made regarding programs, policies, or procedures. Comments regarding an employee or student other than the child of the speaker will not be heard in public session. Groups addressing the same topic should select one speaker. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. 
The board chair reserves the right to allot additional time or halt public comments that do not adhere to the guidelines. Tonight's first citizen comment is Johnny Cribb. Mr. Cribb will be speaking over his concern over the volunteer policy being considered. Mr. Cribb, the microphone is yours. Mr. Cooper, if you would time our speakers this evening, thank you very much. Mr. Cribb, you may begin. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, first, to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been coaching high school athletics for over 15 years. Um, only three of them as an employee, as a school teacher. Um, I've never coached my child. Um, this next school year, my son will enter the ninth grade. Um, I started coaching at Hanahan High School when my son was in kindergarten, I believe. Uh, so nothing I say, I'm not going to coach my son at any point during his high school career. It's a choice of mine. Um, I've seen lots of people do it and do an excellent job of it. Um, the concern I have is, uh, I don't know the full wording. I keep hearing that the wording may get changed, and I don't know the full extent of it. But my concern is uh, the position that we're putting some of these principals and ADs and coaches in with this policy, what will be the unintended consequences? Um, I know you don't take that lightly. I'm trying to envision how that plays out. My daughter plays softball. My son also wrestles. Wrestle is not a sport that you can just go grab a teacher and say, I need you to go sit in there for a couple hours. Uh, we have two parents that fall in that category at the high school. Um, throughout my tenure in, in teaching and, and play in Berkeley and play in all these other schools, all the schools in our conference have a lot of excellent parent coaches. If any of them are directly coaching their children and they are a problem, I'm not sure why we wouldn't deal with those directly. If my child goes to Hanahan High School and a teacher, an individual teacher does something out of line, I'm not going to get mad, pull my kid out of that school, homeschool them, or send them somewhere else. I'm going to trust that the principal and the AD or whoever's involved will deal specifically with that problem if there is one. Um, the, vol the, the biggest thing in the community right now is what is the exact information because there's a lot of guessing about it. There's almost an indictment on volunteers right now. Uh, my wife, I'm a lunch buddy at the elementary school. I go to career day at the high school. I'm in the concession stands constantly, whether it's over grease or whether it's cooking or serving hamburgers or what it, filling in for other folks that don't come. Uh, we do test proctoring at the school. It, somehow, there's been an urgency about volunteers on the athletic field. Volunteers are the backbone of our whole school. We use them everywhere. Are there some bad ones? Certainly. And if there are, uh, de deal with those individually. I, I hope we come to some finality on this and cooler heads or a wise decision prevails. Because right now, there's a lot of volunteers feeling like, you know, when, they, when a year ends and you're, you're done volunteering, you've thrown thousands of pitches and you've worked a ton, you just walk off and you don't really, you're not looking for a thank you or anything like that. But you're definitely not looking for somehow my involvement out there is a negative. Mm -hmm. And our local school board needs to address that and remove me and people like me. Right. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Cripp. We appreciate you being here this evening. And Mr. Cooper, I heard that alarm loud and clear. We, we appreciate you doing that. <laughs> Next up is Mr. Fred Lincoln. Mr. Lincoln is from Wando, South Carolina. Mr. Lincoln would like to speak to the board about a subject naming of the school. Mr. Lincoln, welcome again, sir. It's good to have you back. Thank you, uh, Dr. Thompson and the rest of the board members. Uh, I'm here tonight with a uh, member of the Wando, Hugh G. Kane Hoy, uh, Men Coalition. And um, we are here tonight to thank the board for the naming of uh, the new school on Clemens Ferry Road in honor of uh, Phil Simmons. Um, we want to thank uh, Mr. Cooper um, and Mr. Wright working with us. Uh, we had a committee uh, with a cross-section of folks from our community and we sat down and we got input from our community and we rec were recommended by our community that 
Cole Simmons would be a, a great name for a school. And we are proud to have his name placed on this school. This is, a, this is an issue that is dear to all of our heart. Um, we have seen in Charleston County, in the African American community, 60% of the boys are dropping out of high school. And we see the naming of this school after an African American would inspire young kids. Philip Simmons, born on Daniels Island, had to leave Daniels Island and go to Charleston to get an education because there was no school for him at that time. And, and working with Mr. Cooper, and he, we explained that to him, and he worked daily with us, conducted, to, conducted this committee meeting professionally, and gave everybody the opportunity to express their opinion. And the majority, on the, uh, we only had a few people who opposed his name at that time. And um, we want to uh, say to him, thank him for, his, uh, for all he has done to get the name, get the school to be named after him. And the community is proud of this name, and we stand behind it. We heard that there was a petition going around uh, saying they oppose it. But any petition that you have, I guarantee you, I could bring in four times as many more signature by Monday morning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lincoln. We appreciate you being with us this evening, sir. Thank you very much. Next up is uh, Mr. Todd Ellis from Hanahan. He would like to discuss the volunteer coach policy. Mr. Ellis, the microphone is yours, sir. Good evening, board members. I appreciate your time. Uh, I am uh, not a, I'm a transplant. I uh, was actually born and raised in Georgia. I'm a college athlete, prior military, like many that uh, transplant here to the Navy brought me here. I am uh, the father of three boys. I am a, as a coaching, I am a, a USA wrestling coach, a USA boxing coach, a USA weightlifting coach, all gold level certified. I'm currently, I have engineering degrees and I'm currently pursuing my sports medicine degree in order to make myself a better coach. Out of all of that, I am a volunteer. I'm also not going to be coaching this year if you guys currently are through because one of my kids just became a freshman at Hanahan. I'm the guy that won't get to coach. The only reason why I'm here able to do this stuff is because I came out of a very rural area. I went to college on athletics. I would not have been anywhere at college. I would not have become in the Navy. I would not have had the opportunities given had I not had athletics. It has been absolutely crucial to me to pass that on to this community. My own kid at the Citadel is struggling to pay for it. He's going to go in debt where I have had many kids get scholarships, not my own. I've sacrificed my time and money to produce those kids, to have them give an opportunity because this is my home. This is my community. I don't know if you guys know this, but as a national level, internationally certified coach, we discuss on a regular basis, there is a national coaching shortage. The way I found out about this was not from anybody at Hanahan or Berkeley County, a fellow colleague of mine who's in the doctorate program with me, calls me up from England and tells me, hey, what's this, a particular word he used, about a county in South Carolina that's going to remove volunteer coaches. I thought you guys couldn't get enough people to get involved with youth athletics. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's silly. And sure enough, there's our name. Berkeley County is seeking to ban volunteer parent coaches because of preferential treatment. I don't know if you guys realize how far reaching that could be. Well, does that mean that because my kid's in band and I got, that's an all volunteer force? That's a scholarship, that, there's pre, that first chair is looking at scholarships. You gotta stop that. How about people that donate money who have kids on teams? You gotta stop that. And then if you truly believe this, I would think that if you think I could show preferential treatment, how about anybody that's on the board who has kids? Is it right for you guys to sit here and pass a policy that might be showing preferential treatment towards your kids. If there's a problem, it should be handled at the lowest level possible. It's not the job of Congress to legislate me as a dad. I don't think it's right for you guys to legislate anybody at a school. Hanahan 
has 32 sports, 32 different teams with 60 teachers. We all know there's a head coach and a volunteer coach. Do the math. We can't physically do it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Appreciate you being with us here this evening, Coach. Patricia Eckstein is up next. Ms. Eckstein is from Hanahan. She would like to discuss the subject of the Hanahan Citizens Committee for the new elementary school, and I believe you have a statement. Is that correct? Is that, what, is that what I mean? sort of right. statement, yes. Thank you. Good to see you again. Good Pat. evening. Hello, everybody. It's good to be back to see you again. Um, we asked on behalf of the citizens in the area of Tanner Foster mm -hmm. Creek a while back if you would convene a citizens committee, as you did for Daniel Island, Clements Ferry, and Kane Hoy. And the answer was we're looking at areas for the school over to, for our friends east of the Cooper rather than you had an area that, that was different, a different, but you had problems with the location. So we asked and you declined and Mayor Newman Blackwell asked us if we would convene and help the city move this along and to work together. Um, we're following the model of the Daniel Island, Kane Hoy, and Clements Ferry. We have a 12-member steering committee. We sent you a letter today just asking for some information to help us move forward. Whatever we discover, want to report, we will share with you as well as with the city of Hanahan and with all, all of the residents. But we do want to remind you that at the hearing in December, the standing room only audience asked for the city and the school board to work together. And that is the aim of our Hanahan Citizens Committee for the new elementary school. We also have to point out the parents said they were willing to wait a year to find the right location. So we're coming up on that, that deadline again soon of uh, when you came back to us after declining turning down the Charleston water site to coming to the Bowen or the Foster Creek Village site. We're coming up on that same deadline next month of a year ago. No one spoke in favor of the school district rezoning request at that meeting. So I just, uh, please know that we will come back. We will work with you. We're asking for information so we can go the same guidelines that you used with Daniel Island and with your other school sites, and we will keep in communication with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much. We also, as I stated before, we certainly appreciated your support during the referendum as well. Next up is Gary Zimmer. Gary is from, or Mr. Zimmer is from Goose Creek, South Carolina. He would like to discuss the topic of parent volunteers. Mr. Zimmer, the microphone is yours, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen on the board. Um, I'm actually going to piggyback off of uh, a lot of what Mr. Cribb and, and Mr. Ellis said and um, I, I thank them very much. Um, I'm going to start out, I'm also a transplant originally from Chicago, and were it not for sports and an absolute wonderful coach, I was probably one of those drop-off kids. Um, I was lucky to be a C student until coach told me I couldn't swim, and then it was A's and B's, and then C's when I was out of, out of season, <laughs> A's and B's to stay in season, so you have those kids, I know that, I'm one of them. Um, I got into assisting and coaching late in life. However, my time in the Navy, I volunteered at the schools, reading coach, te uh, teaching history to uh, foreign students. So um, I'm going to follow up with, with just a few points. The athletic directors, as I understand, in Berkeley County are now all administrators or they're, they're headed that way for the few that are not. So as an administrator, they should have a lot more power over what's going on in the field. The head coaches are ultimately responsible for the team. And lastly, in that group, becomes the school administrator, that principal. That is the CEO of the school. They have ultimate control over there. And if they're not maintaining that control, that's where I expect my board to step in and say, excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Principal, you've got a problem in your neighborhood, fix it. And I say that as a police officer because that's what happens. When I'm in charge of my units, my boss comes to me and says, you have a problem in your neighborhood, fix it. That's where it needs to be. We don't need to use a shotgun to take care of everything. 
pinpoint it, and I believe that, that was Mr. Ellis that said that. Um, we want parents involved. I'm actively involved. Good point was brought up about the unintended consequences. I'm a member of the, also a member of the Stratford uh, Athletic Boosters <laughs> Association. All parent run. Every parent has a child on the team. We also offer scholarships every year to a male and a female athlete. If you put this out that we're not able to participate with our children, you're taking that away. We sponsor the varsity letters at Stratford High School. You take that away. So now, what else are, are we doing? Um, on Stratford High School's website, off of the Berkeley County website, and it's an old document, but it states that their intended goal is to increase parent participation in reference to PTA. If that's the case, it should also extend into athletics. So I'm asking that if the school board is taking this up, that, and maybe there is a misunderstanding of what's going on, but if the school board is taking up the fact that they don't want parents involved because of, of an issue, please don't come to me asking me that you need money because it's for the children. My time is much more valuable than the money I can give you. Thank you for your, Thank you for your comments, Mr. Zimmer. We appreciate you being here this evening. Next up is Courtney Salisbury. Courtney would like to discuss Policy JH, which has student activities. Ms. Salisbury, the microphone is yours. Dr. Thompson. Mr. Chairman, board members, and superintendent. Thank you for the opportunity to let me speak this evening. I promise I won't take much of your time. I respect all of you for your service, and I assure you I don't envy the difficult decisions that you will ultimately be charged with making tonight. Obviously, the topic before us tonight has generated a lot of debate and passion in the last few months. I believe it's a credit to the members of our community that we are willing to engage in a healthy debate when they feel strongly about an issue. I'm here tonight to ask you to vote no to the proposal on the table. Having said that, I will also tell you that I believe that reasonable people can disagree on an issue. Chairman Murray, I don't think you're unreasonable because you believe that parents shouldn't coach their children at a high school level, but I'll tell you what I think is unreasonable. I think it's unreasonable to shove a policy down your constituents' throats when there is such a large and vocal opposition while not one person at any meeting I have been to has come forward publicly in support of this proposal. That is what I call unreasonable. What's the rush? Why can't we have a real debate on this issue where we cite facts? and do some research and not just stand up here and spout off our own opinions. I want to leave you this evening with one last thing. Remember that each of you, as public officials, it is your responsibility and your first obligation should always be the responsibility to your constituents should always be to protect the rights of the people that you represent not strip them away. You should never enact a new policy that takes away the rights and privileges of the people you represent until all other options have been exhausted. This is a burden that should not be taken lightly. You owe it to all of the opposition of this policy to look for other means to address this issue. I ask you to have faith and Superintendent Thompson, our principals, and our athletic directors to do their job and to handle these issues as they arise and do not force this rigid policy on them. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate you being here this evening, Ms. Salisbury, and we appreciate your comments. Next up, our final comment for this evening is Ms. Sally Walford. Ms. Walford is from Monk's Corner, South Carolina. She would like to discuss the parent volunteer policy. Ms. Walford, welcome back. The microphone is yours. Uh, I felt a responsibility for starting um, a petition because there is a loud outcry against this policy. 
Um, and I wanted, I submitted that electronically to the board last night. I also wanted to bring a hard copy. 512 people have signed against this policy. We're not misinformed about what the policy is about. We understand it's about parents coaching on teams where their children are involved. We're not misinformed by that. The petition as well as the comments were submitted. I implore you to reflect the interest of your constituents and the greater good of Berkeley County. I'm also hopeful that you've investigated the true genesis of this issue and the personal involvement of particular board members at particular schools and what it means to their political interests. I urge the board to follow the Berkeley County School District Section B, School Board, board Operations BH, Code of Ethics for School Board Members. I urge you to examine the policy under the light of the high responsibility by which the board membership demands by thinking always in terms of the children first. Understanding that the basic function of the school board is policy making, not administration, and accepting that responsibility to learn to discriminate intelligently between these two functions. And accepting the responsibility with your fellow board members to see that maximum facilities and resources are provided for proper instruction for our children. Most importantly, please refuse to be influenced by personal or political gain and represent the entire school district at all times. There are 512 people who signed this. That's more people than showed up for the last special election for school board. People are adamantly against it. It's your responsibility to re represent those people. We have these open forums for all these other things, but we cannot engage in an intelligent conversation about this. We would rather move forward and try to sweep everything under the rug and pretend like we don't know what this is actually about because no one will stand up and say what it's actually about. And I urge those people who know that information to come forward and say that and also to have an intelligent conversation about volunteers and what it means and what the true underlying political issue is. I urge you to represent your people and your constituents and the entire school district on this policy and vote no for the changes to policy JH. And I also have a copy of the comments and 512 signatures. Right, thank you, Mrs. Walford. We appreciate your comments this evening. Just just a quick word. I, th I think I speak for all of my colleagues. I thought our comments tonight were outstanding. They were well thought, uh, well written. Uh, I think we all took your comments very seriously. These are comments that we'll continue to think about. And I just for one appreciate your professionalism and uh, very proud to be a part of this county. With that said, that concludes this evening's citizen comments. Now let's move on to agenda item number seven. Dr. Levine has a recommendation for an item for action. That item for action is entitled the second reading of policy JH entitled student activities. Dr. Levine. Thank you. Good evening, Board Chair Murray, Superintendent Thompson, members of the board, staff members, visitors, and other members of the audience. The board's policy review committee reviewed the initial amendment to policy JH that was presented for first reading at the June 24th school board meeting. A change has been made to the first sentence of that amendment to read as follows. The intent of the board is to fill high school interscholastic coaching positions with qualified employees of the district. At this time, it is the recommendation of the administration to approve the second and final reading for policy JH as listed under item eight of the July 22nd, 2014 board agenda with the additional statement, the intent of the board is to fill high school interscholastic coaching positions with qualified employees of the district. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Levine. Board, we have just received a recommendation from the administration. I will repeat it for uh, each of us to hear again to approve the second and final reading for policy JH as listed under item 7 of the July 22nd, 2014 board agenda. With the additional statement, the intent of the board is to fill high school interscholastic coaching positions with qualified employees of the district. 
With that said, do I have a motion and a second regarding the administration's recommendation on student, excuse me, on policy JH entitled student activities? Mr. Chair, you do. I move that we accept the recommendation of the administration to approve the second and final reading for policy JH as listed under item eight of the July 22nd, 2014 board agenda with the additional statement, the intent of the board is to fill high school inter scholastic coaching positions with qualified employees of the district. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Lee. A motion has been made by Ms. Schwabe. I'll repeat that motion here shortly. That motion has been seconded by Ms. Lee. Prior to opening it up for any discussion we may have, let me repeat the recommend, excuse me, let me repeat the motion to accept the recommendation of the administration. A motion has been made to accept the recommendation of the administration to approve the second and final reading for policy JH as listed under item eight of the July 22nd, 2014 board agenda with the additional statement. The intent of the board is to fill high school interscholastic coaching positions with qualified employees of the district. The motion is on the table. Do we have any discussion regarding this motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Wright, the uh, floor is yours, sir. I would hope that, that we would indicate the role of the parent volunteers as far as uh, make it very simplistic in terms of how can they be involved in their involvement in spite of the fact if they have a child in the ninth grade and they're coaching the student, if the principal or the coach, like we discussed in the previous uh, meeting before, is involved and there's not a problem. Mm -hmm. How do we address that and, and so that we can bring some clarity to some of these parents? I think what I'm hearing is that I, the intent is never to get rid of volunteer coaching. One of the things was mentioned that can a volunteer coach, parent coach their own child. And uh, if it's not a problem with the principal or the coach or the athletic director at that particular school, then uh, we should at least try to be accommodating to a situation like that. So how will we address that, that situation going forward? Because I think what I'm hearing from these parents and everyone who stood up here tonight, their concern is that am I going to be able to be involved and, and we're not eliminating parent involvement. I just want to bring some clarity there and make it simplistic enough to where we can understand and they can as well. Sure, sure. And I can respond, Mr. Wright. I'll also open it up to members of the committee too if you would like to respond. And if I miss anything, please fill in for me. I think that your, Mr. Wright, I think that your comment is addressed in the last sentence of the policy. I'll read it for you. The principal may request an exception to this guideline if the parent coach is determined to be vital to the existence of the program. Now, as one of our state, our, our speakers so eloquently stated earlier tonight, and I was very impressed when they said it, the major function of this board is to adopt policy. Now, you asked me a question on enforcement. As you well know, Mr. Wright, you're much more experienced at this position than I am. We're not, in, we're not involved in the enforcement of this policy. So I, I, to me, I would respond to your concern with that would be the superintendent's decision. Now, each, of this, each member of this board, when we first began discussing this issue, said that we had to have that statement and that policy. And I agree wholeheartedly. I, I, yeah. I, and I understand. I just wanted you to to read the whole policy so that there wouldn't be any misconception when we leave out of this sure. room because sure. what has happened on most occasions is that you're hearing from the community that this board, this district, would like to get rid of all parent volunteer and right. that's not the truth. I would like for some clarity to be brought forward and that's why I presented that question to you, Mr. Mr. Sure. Dr. Murray, sure. board chair, oh, I'm sorry. Listen. That's why I brought it to you so that we can discuss it some so that when we do vote on this, everybody will understand why we're taking this position because it's not eliminating any parent involvement. It's just that we having some, some kind of like meat and gravy to this policy to where the mm -hmm. superintendent, the athletic director, and the head coach could make some decision if we do have a problem. Sure. Thank you. Any members of the committee, did I miss anything? I don't want to speak on behalf of the whole committee. Everybody good, Madam Chairman? All right. Any other discussion from the board regarding this motion? We, can we read the whole policy? Mr. Hayes, would you would you like for me to read it? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Right, certainly, you're West Virginia. I just want to hear that West Virginia accent. Uh, the intent of the board, this is from the beginning. The intent of the board is to fill high school 
interscholastic coaching positions with qualified employees of the district. The principal is responsible for assigning staff to coaching and supervisory responsibilities, including coordinating volunteers to support interscholastic activities. Volunteers must adhere to policy IFCD. Principals should not assign volunteer parents of student athletes that are not full-time employees of the district to coaching responsibilities at the varsity or junior varsity level within the program in which their son or daughter is participating. The principal may request an exception to this guideline if the parent coach is determined to be vital to the existence of the program. And that's the policy. That's the end of the policy, Mr. Hayes. All right, point Mr. Cooper, sir, the microphone is yours. Just a point of clarification. Mm -hmm. that, that's the only the piece of the policy that's being proposed to be added. It's a three-page policy. Right, correct. It's just right. a, it's a small okay. paragraph. All right. So right. There's a lot, lot of other things into this policy that talk about the importance of sports and into a lot of people's comments, the role the principal takes in sanctioning all student activities and governing all those in addition to that, in the rest of the body, of the correct three, three pages of this policy. And, and you're not asking me to read all three pages. <laughs> no, I just want to clarify because Mr. Hayes did ask you to read the policy. Sure, right. <laughs> That's the paragraph in question, and, Mr. And Hayes. I don't, and I think well, you did exactly Thank what you he intended you to do, but it is a long policy. Thank you. Any further discussion, comments, or questions? Hearing no further discussion, we will call the question. A motion has been uh, made by Mrs. Schwabe. That motion has been seconded by Ms. Lee to accept the recommendation of the administration to approve the second and final reading for policy JH as listed under item 8 of the July 22nd, 2014 board agenda with the additional statement, the intent of the board is to fill high school interscholastic coaching positions with qualified employees of the district. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously. Dr. Levine, the board has accepted the recommendation of the administration. Thank you. Now moving on to agenda item eight, financial services. Mr. Thomas, the microphone is yours, sir. Tonight you have three items for action. Agenda item 8A, a bond resolution for annual payments for installment revenue purchase bonds entitled SAFE bonds. A agenda item 8B, RFP 416, main entry storefront upgrades to five schools. And finally, agenda item 8C, RFP 423, a uh, Hanahan Middle School gymnasium floor. Mr. Thomas? You don't hear me? <laughs> Mr. Thomas, if I could take a break just for a minute. If, if anyone would like to, at this time, uh, exit, uh, this would be a good time for you to do so. We still have a long part of the agenda remaining, but you may exit gracefully if you so choose. Mr. Thomas, if you could just give these folks just a minute. Thank you. Thank you. 